wanted a thing called tuna sashimi. Hello guys, tune you back again. Well, this week uh, we're going to do a 1cc and a review all in one, just to mix it up. I said I was playing this game last night on my live stream. Um, it's a game that uh, I've, I've played a long time ago, but I pretty much ignore because it doesn't look that great. And it doesn't play that great, but I pretty ignored it. But I was playing it last night and it's a little bit of fun, so I decided to do a 1cc of it. So, uh, this game is uh, Makai Prince Dorobokachan, or Son of Dracula, or Dracula Kid. Um, it sort of says it sort of shares the same name as the NES game by Konami, uh, Dracula Kid. But I looked it up; that came out three years after this. This was released in 1990, so it was a few years after the PC Engine was released. Um, this was published by Naxatsoft, but it was actually uh, developed by Red Company, which is the same company that did the uh, PC Kid games, all the Bonk games, loads of Thunder, Gates of Thunder. Um, and various other games on the uh, PC Engine. Uh, Red were a very talented company, and I gotta admit, this this is quite a, a low quality game for them. I gotta be honest. Um, but anyway, th th it's not a bad little. It's a little platform game. I'm pretty sure there's five levels. Um, I think it's five levels. Anyway, uh, you play from all, and uh, there's multiple. There's multiple sort of ways you can go for the levels, and multiple secrets and stuff. Um, sometimes you find these mower heads, which some you, some levels you need to use them to get to uh, to get to the exit. But sometimes they're secret ones, and if you um, if you basically jump on them, they take you to different parts of the level. Sometimes you get power ups, some like you see them there. Sometimes you get power ups. Sometimes you get uh, secrets and energy ups and things like that. Um, there is one that looks like he's dead and upside down, and but I have no idea what it does. Um, the other thing you can do, there is sub-bosses and main bosses in this game. Depending on the levels and the way you go through levels, sometimes you can find different sub-bosses. Uh, or fight two sub-bosses. So it depends where these, sometimes these mower heads actually take you. Um, I see, graphics on this game is it, quite basic. It does have a little bit of charm, I'll give you that. But it, it's quite a basic looking game. Uh, music is very old school basic. But it, it does the job. It's nothing special, but... It, there's a job, the Red Company were obviously going for a, a very, you know, maybe a cartoony, cutesy look. Maybe that's what they were aiming for when they uh, made this game. Um, you get, you can jump in this game, uh, but there's only one level of jump. So there's no holding the button down for so long to get to a certain level. You tap jump and you jump to the full year jump, which is really annoying at times because there's loads of times where maybe a half jump would have been better. Uh, to kill enemies in this, some, some enemies you can jump on top of them and they don't kill them. Some enemies you can pick up that syringe and uh, you can freeze enemies in their uh, place. Uh, but generally, most of the time, you're using your wand which fires a little tiny fireball that only goes right in front of you. But as you can see, I've got the red armor there. There's three armors in the game. There's red, blue and black. Oh, and there's a gold armor towards the end as well. Um, the red armor is the OP armor in this game because you fire the fireball right the way across the screen. So pretty much ignore the other armors. The best armor you want is this one. Good thing about the armors as well is when you they take a couple of hits which don't take off your energy bar, which is quite nice. There is another flaw in the gameplay as well. The energy bar you can get energy power ups. Only problem is you start off with three hearts. You get you pick up two energy power ups. That takes you to five hearts, and and as in, as in most games, even if you got half a heart, you could pick up a never energy power up like by there, and it would put you back to full. Well, this game doesn't do that. If you if you if you ride at the top and you pick a never en energy uh, pickup up, as you'll see now, it puts your energy back to standard. Why the hell they did that, I don't know. It's super annoying at times as well because then you'll be in a level, you'll pick an energy power up by mistake, and next thing you know, you're back to standard and you'll die. You have a problem this game got bosses they're almost impossible to dodge uh, most of the time you've got to use this secondary attack which is pull down and you fire tomatoes at them uh, you fire the tomatoes at the bosses the other problem is you don't have any iframes so basically you can get hit over and over really fast but bosses and some enemies have iframes as you can see I'm, I'm basically I'm hitting him and his iframes are making him go through me so I'm not getting hit again doesn't happen on all bosses and trying to jump over the bosses to uh, avoid their attacks is a bit of a pain in the ass. The other problem they got is in the actual gameplay itself. You, you, you basically walking left and right is okay, but if you double tap, he runs. 
which sounds fine, but you can't, you can't, uh, when he stops running, he slides forward a little bit. Only snag with that is, is if you try to tap dodge, tap sort of to the end of a platform, he'll run off the platform. He'll also run into enemies. And sometimes when you're pulling down and you're using the tomato attack and you get up and you want to pull back down again, he'll run forward. So it's a little bit annoying. You'll run off platforms and it's sometimes when you turn left and right, you, he just runs, which also screws you up. So it means turning left and right in this game is, is not fast. So it's got that problem with the gameplay as well. I, I, I don't know why they did that. They, they could have done with maybe giving you a half jump, getting rid of the run because... There's only one place essentially you need it, or maybe like do like a Mario thing, hold on fire to jump, uh, to run. Sorry, uh, that might have been a better idea to be honest in the way they've done it because it doesn't quite work properly. So th that's the gameplay things over and the graphics and sound. So I don't want to get I don't want to give this game a really bad review because it, it's not a terrible game. It does have a little bit of charm to it and it's not bad, but it it, it ain't by no means a great platform game on the PC Engine. Everything else with Red did is much better, to be honest. But it does have a little bit of charm to it. Uh, another thing with this game as well, uh, I didn't know that it had a sequel. And it's the Twisted T Tales of Spike McFang on the um, SNES. It's actually a sequel to this game. Also developed by Red, but published by Naxartsoft. So I, I never knew. I it was only when I just started looking it up to try and find the date of release that I uh, found that out. So... Maybe worth me having a go with that, see if I can uh, see how, what the difference is with that is. Because I remember playing that game a long time ago. So, as a review score, I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it 6 out of 10. Like I said, it's not, it's not a terrible game, but it, it isn't a great game either. But it is a little bit charming to have a go of. It's not super difficult. With a couple of goals and a little bit of getting used to the way it plays and a bit of patience, you'll finish it pretty quick. Um, yeah, and like I said, you'll have to just tank the damage on the bosses because avoiding them is almost impossible. So, yeah, not a little bad game. I'll give it that. They say, you know, if you've got an EverDrive or an emulator, give it a go. I probably wouldn't suggest buying it on the PC Engine due to the fact it's stupidly expensive now. So unless you could get it cheap, if you get it cheap, pick it up. If you get it for like under 20 quid, maybe get it and add it to your collection. I, I did see it in Hard Off in Japan when I was there, and it was an unboxed copy. I think it was about like 15 quid. I, I sh probably should have picked it up actually, but yeah, you know, there you go. I didn't pick it up at the time because it was unboxed and it, it did look, it didn't look like the cleanest cartridge in the world. But yeah, there you go. But uh, yeah, give it a try and emulate it anyway, see what you think. But uh, I'll leave you go now and um, you can just watch the rest of the 1cc. So I don't know. Thank you. 
Thank you. 